All right, in this video, we're going to do print two. It's just another profile. We're going to go through the steps of setting up the tools, stock geometry, and programming this quick profile together. Um, if you've downloaded the packet that you can link at the beginning of this video series of training videos, then you can follow along with the print. Uh, you also see it here on the screen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new conversational program. I'm going to go in and set up some stock geometry. So I'm going to go to my input, part setup, stock geometry. We're going to say yes, we want to manually size our stock. Uh, the part is five and a half inches, so let's make it out of uh, five and an eight, five and five eighths. So five point six two five for the length. We'll say it is uh, out of six inch diameter material. There's no inner diameter. And I'm going to go ahead and shift that part over a sixteenth of an inch, which is half of the extra distance of our part. It's five and a half finished dimension. We made it five and five eighths, so that leaves an eighth inch total, sixteenth on either side. So I'm going to shift that out, 0.0625, and that's how much I'm going to face off the part in the beginning. Let's go ahead and set up a couple tools. This time I'm going to do a rougher and a finisher, so I'm going to do tool one. We're going to make this a uh, turning tool. There it is. So our depth of cut per side is going to be 0.1. Our tool offset we'll use is one. Looks like our orientation and our tool nose radius are okay. Those came in from the last time we had set up a tool as tool one. I'm going to do 650 for my surface feet clockwise and seven thousandths per rev. Let's turn on our primary coolant. We're going to use an 80 degree diamond. It's a number four size insert and we're going to do negative five degrees on the lead angle. All right, so let's do tool number two. Tool number two, also going to be a turning tool. We'll do the same point one maximum depth of cut using offset two. Again, our orientation and our tool nose radius look okay. We'll leave those alone. Let's maybe do 1150 on our surface feet. Clockwise, 5,000 per rev. Again, we'll turn on our primary coolant. Let's make this a 55 degree diamond. Again, a size four. And we will do negative five degrees on the taper. So now we've got a program created, stock geometry, and two tools created. So let's go ahead and start programming. So I'm going to go input, uh, part programming. We're going to select under turning, profile, and we're just going to begin to fill out our information. So the first thing I'm going to do is face this part off. I'm going to go ahead and use tool number one. leave everything set as it came in. I'm going to make this a finish pass because we haven't done that yet and really talked about it. So the difference between a roughing pass, the roughing pass is going to ask you which direction do you want to move the tool while you're doing the roughing, which will then tell it what direction to step down or over for roughing. Or if you select the turn finish, then I have to pick a cutting strategy. Either none, if I've gone ahead and taken care of the radius of the tool myself, or I'm going to stay to the left or right of the path. <clears throat> I'm going to select left. When we're turning along the diameter, we're going to be on a cutter comp right. When we're coming down the face of the part, we want to be cutter comp left. <clears throat> and if you're not familiar with that, if you think of yourself behind the tool, pushing the tool along the path, let's say I'm pushing it along the OD of the part, then I want that tool to stay to the right side of my programmed diameter. If I'm coming down the face of the tool, picture yourself on the turret, pushing that tool down the face of the part, then you want to stay to the left side of the face, so to keep that tool on the left side. So that's how we look at our um, cutter comp left and right on a lathe, is what direction are you on, uh, what direction, or or what side of the cut are you on when you're pushing the tool along in its direction. All right, our approach 
and clearance angles came in. Those are okay. We don't need to change anything here, so we're good to go. Now we'll go to the geometry tab. We said we had six inch material. Again, we're gonna do our standard two inch point two, so 6.2 and point two for our rapid position. Now we're gonna start our profile. So we have a one inch diameter turn here. At the top, or right at the corner there, we have a um, chamfer. But as I said, I wanna face this off first. So I'm gonna wrap it to maybe, a, or start it as 6.1 and Z of zero. I don't need any stock allowance. I'm doing this as a finish pass in one cut. So I'm gonna start at this diameter. Next, I'm gonna do a face. I'm gonna go below the center, at least what my tool nose radius is. I got a 31 tool nose radius, so I'm gonna go down 32 thousandths below center, just to make sure I've cleaned it all the way up and I don't leave a little tit from the radius. And the next, I'm going to pull off the part in the positive direction to point one. Again, that gives me my perpendicular move that I need that we've talked about several times. So now we're gonna to go to the graphics here and we'll watch that run. All right, so if I slow that down, you can see that we are removing a 16th of an inch off the face of the part. All right, so let's go back to the program. We can highlight block one here and hit next block. Also gonna be turning and it's gonna be a profile. We're gonna to use tool number one. Take all the information that it fills in. We're gonna leave this as a turn rough. We are roughing along the Z axis and our maximum depth of cut is 100. All of our approach points and everything look okay, so we're good to go now. We'll select the geometry tab. We'll put our rapid position in, same one we used before, 6.2 and 0.2. And now we're gonna do the actual profile. So we see we have a one inch diameter turn with a 50 thousandths chamfer break there on the front of the part. So what I wanna do is I wanna start somewhere in front of this part, smaller than one inch, so I can feed into the face, come up the face, break that corner and so forth. So I'm gonna start at 750. I wanna make sure I have enough room for the 31 thousandths tool nose radius and that 50 thousandths chamfer. I don't wanna get any, and the, the stock allowance I'm gonna leave, I don't want any overlap there, so I wanna make sure I start small enough that those aren't going to be a problem. And I'll start point one in front. So I'm at 750 diameter, 100 thousandths in front of the part. Let's leave 20 thousandths per side on all radiuses and uh, chamfers, and I'm only going to leave five thousandths on the face. So those are gonna be left for the finish tool. Now the next segment, Again, I started at 750 diameter, 100 in front, so I'm going to turn to Z0. I'm going to then come up the face to the one inch. Again, we programmed to that theoretical corner. When I get there, I'll do a chamfer. We have a 45 degree chamfer, but if we didn't, we could change it here. And that is 0 0.05. Next, You'll notice that in sometimes when you use blend arcs and chamfers especially, it will gray out everything other than what is possible to use. I can't put a 45 degree, 50 thousandths chamfer between a face and a taper, for example. So the only thing I can do now is turn, which is what I wanna do. I'll look at my print, I'm gonna go back negative 3.3, so minus 3.3. We see that we have a corner radius there of 100 thousandths. So my next segment will be a blend arc of 0.1. Then I'm going into a taper. So the next segment will be a taper. It's telling me both the diameter and the, the Z depth here. So let's go to a diameter of 2.5. And we're feeding back to a depth of uh, 4.05 minus 4.05. Now you'll see that it calculated the angle of 135 degrees. Had I known or not known what the Z depth was, I could have left this blank, put in 135 degrees, and it would have calculated the Z depth. So if we put in the information that we know, it should be able to calculate the information that we don't know. And oftentimes on a print, I wouldn't have that Z depth, it would just have the 135 degrees. All right, so we've come up that taper. 
Next segment, we're going to break that corner again at 100 thousandths, so another blend arc of 0.1. Next segment will be a turn. We're going back that 2.5 diameter back to a negative 4.8. We're then going to corner radius again, so blend arc of 0.1. Next segment, we'll come up the face to our major diameter of 5.9. Next segment will be a chamfer of 50 thousandths. Next segment, a turn. We're going to go to, uh, let's go 550, so we'll go past the end of the part, plus the radius of the tool, so if I wanted to flip this part around and cut it off, I'd have material to do so. So let's go minus 5.550. And now we started this with a turn, so we're going to have to finish with the face. So we're going to do a next segment face. we got 6 inch diameter material, so I'm going to come to 6.02, just a little bigger than the material, and that should finish out my profile. So now if I go to watch this run, we see it face and start turning. All right, so there's our roughed, roughed out part. We've left uh, material on all the chamfers, radiuses, Z faces, and diameters. So we're going to go ahead and finish this part now. So we'll go back to the program. We're going to go to Review. Highlight our roughing block that we want to create a finished profile from. Multiple block functions. Create finished profile. If I open that profile now, you'll see that we've gone to a turn finish. It automatically selected the cutter comp right. And it has removed all of our stock uh, allowance, turn allowance, and so forth. I have a turning tool set up, so I'm just going to go change this to tool 2. Yes, I want to use the defined feeds and speeds from that, and I want to use the offsets. So now we're using tool 2, offset 2, to do the finishing. So if I go back and watch it run now, we'll face it with one, rough it with one, and then come back in with tool 2 to finish the profile. There you go. So we have a finished part. So you can see how easy this is to do. Even with me explaining it as I did it, I was still able to do this in a very short period of time, just a couple of minutes. So hopefully that helped you and you can continue trying to program some different profiles on your own.